everybody. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello. My name is Sarah Palmira and I love chatting about skincare, makeup, and all things beauty. Man, have I been excited for this one. So for those of you who don't know, Samantha Ravendahl, who I've watched for a long time, recently launched her makeup line, Auric Beauty. She launched with the Glow Lust products and her Smoke Reflex. And the first thing I immediately thought of when I saw these products was Charlotte Tilbury. Charlotte Tilbury is a beloved brand and it is so fancy and high end. And I feel like these products are so similar. Samantha has definitely taken inspiration from the higher end brands. And I'm just so excited to test these out and kind of compare for you which one you should gravitate towards. Is this super similar? Is it better than Charlotte Tilbury? Keep watching to find out. I have actually been playing with these products for Oh my gosh, over a month now since the launch. I received this really quickly in the mail, which I really appreciated. And I have been playing with them in every single possible way. Timestamps below, if you're a skipper, I've got you, don't worry. I will have timestamps in the description box and comments so that you can just skip to whatever part of the video might be useful. Auric Beauty, let's talk about it. So these products are kind of pricey. I was actually shocked when I saw the price point. They are at the same exact price point as Charlotte Tilbury, maybe a little bit cheaper than Tom Ford, but that already sets the bar pretty high. But when you look at the packaging, when you look at how beautifully these products were constructed, then it makes sense. And to me, they really do apply like high-end products. Now, Auric means gold, and the slogan here is glowing together, and that is reflected in the very inclusive shade range that Samantha has done, and I really, really think that that is so important going forward. The brand is also cruelty-free. The shipping time was really fast. I had tracking the entire way. So all of these things initially were really good impressions of the brand. The product that I was of course most excited about was the Glow Lust just because I love me a highlighter glowy sheeny product and so I wanted to compare it to the Charlotte Tilbury. Now if you look at the ingredients in both of these products I'm going to pop them here they are almost exactly the same, down to the base, down to the flower extract. We're looking at very similar formulas here. Now, Samantha has said the Glow Lust is also intended to be a product with skincare benefits as well, and that is very obvious and reflected in the formula. We can see different humectants here, such as glycerin. These all help the skin retain water, which is really helpful. And upon application, it definitely applies like a skincare product. So the Glow Lust comes in a frosted bottle with a gold cap with the auric lettering engraved on top. And it also is difficult to open as per Sam's wishes so that it does not leak all over your back. It's very easy to dispense and pump out. So you're not gonna waste a lot of product and it has a very dewy finish. Charlotte Tilbury as always has beautiful packaging, but I do find that with this one, the product does get wasted with the kind of concealery vibe of this packaging, which is very annoying. In terms of the finish, it has a sheerer, more metallic finish and the shade that I got is much more olivey and neutral than the Auric which is a little peachy. It also has less mica than the Charlotte Tilbury so that is why it has less of that metallic sheeny effect and what makes it a slightly different product. Now with that introduction aside let's get into the nitty-gritty and let's apply these products to the skin. Hello, we are all zoomed into the face. You know the drill. We are going to test out these two products. I am first going to prime my face with the Biore UV Watery Essence SPF PA++. This is by far my favorite discovery of 2021. It is just the most gorgeous, lightweight sunscreen. I just love and adore the sunscreen. First of all, it's extremely lightweight and it does not interfere with my makeup application. It does have alcohol higher on the ingredient list than a lot of other sunscreens, but for me and my dry skin, I haven't noticed it causing any dryness, even when I'm on a retinol. And I love how quickly it absorbs. Obviously no white cast, this is a chemical sunscreen, but if you'd like a full review on it, let me know and I'd be happy to kind of bring back that sunscreen series that I did a few months ago. So this is what the sunscreen looks like. I like to reach for this one because it just does not interfere with any of the glow or the dew of these two products, making it the perfect little base. I'm just gonna pat that in. 
Now onto the products. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter on the left side of my face. This is in the shade 2.5 Fair Pale. I love the finish of this one, especially if you want to apply it on the face alone. This is my preference because it really does look really shiny and glowy in the best way. And it just really reflects that light even under the eye area, which makes it ideal for helping to conceal any dark areas of the face. So I'm going to apply it alone and then I'm going to apply Auric on the other side just so that we can compare the finishes of these two products. Now I would say that the Charlotte Tilbury is thinner in terms of the consistency but in my opinion it actually feels heavier on the skin it's kind of a weird little juxtaposition there but even though the formula looks thin it actually i do feel it more on the skin and it is kind of more metallic i have noticed than the auric as you can see it's just given me this kind of shiny sheeny glow and that is what it's looking like so this is the side without any product so it turns out i had a rash on my face so that will really help us compare each product's coverage and this is the side with the Charlotte Tilbury. Now, as you can see, the Charlotte Tilbury has given me a very sheer to light coverage. It has a very metallic -y finish, not super dewy, more sheeny, and it's bounced the light away from my under eye beautifully. On to the Auric Glow Lust. So I picked up the shade Selenite. This was like their light, medium shade. They have an excellent shade range. I know the Charlotte Tilbury has recently expanded theirs, but you know, I love that Auric started out with a good shade range from the beginning. I chose the shade Selenite because I have light, medium, olivey skin, and I noticed a lot of bloggers and YouTubers opting for that shade who had a very similar skin tone to mine. Now, I have been applying these both with my hands because I don't want to kind of, I guess I'm a woman of science and I don't want to change my application for either side and maybe cause any kind of conflicts with the two products. But after playing with these products for about a month, I will say that for the Auric, I prefer to apply it using a beauty blender. I just think that it goes on really, really easily and smoothly that way. And for the Charlotte Tilbury, my preference is actually to use a brush, which is not like me, but I just find that with a beauty blender, it almost just sticks to one area of the face and it does not blend as well as with the fingers or a brush. But fingers are always a great way to just see how a product is wearing. So now that I'm wearing both on both sides of my face, you'll be able to immediately tell that the Auric Glow Lust has more coverage than the Charlotte Tilbury. In terms of consistency here, the Auric definitely is thicker upon initial application. It feels thicker, it feels very hydrating, but it actually feels less heavy on the skin, and I don't really know why. They're both kind of opposites, which is really interesting. The Auric definitely gives more of a wet, juicy, plump, hydrated glow. It's not too metallic-y, and that makes sense because they've actually said that they use less mica in that product than Charlotte Tilbury does, which is what gives that glittery kind of metallic effect. So with the Auric, you're gonna get more of a dew, and then with the Charlotte Tilbury, you're going to get more of a sheen. I also really like that the Auric Beauty does cover a little bit, so it's kind of like a cross between a tinted moisturizer and a really glow boosting product, whereas the Charlotte Tilbury doesn't really give much coverage at all. I'm gonna zoom you in so that you can see both sides. So as you can see, there's more coverage on the Auric side, especially around the eye area. You can see that my dark circles are poking through more on the Charlotte Tilbury side, and my rash is more visible on that side. It has more of a metallic-y finish, while the Auric is more dewy. And one thing I noted as well was that the Auric did not cling to dry patches or emphasize pores as much as the Charlotte Tilbury side. So now that you can see both products on each side of my face, I want to give you some of my thoughts on how it's been wearing each product on my face without anything on top, just alone. So with the Charlotte Tilbury, I really like that it is more metallic-y. You definitely can tell that I'm glowing even more than usual. And I actually like that it is sheer coverage. It's just a glow-boosting product, and I think it's really, really beautiful on the skin. 
In my opinion, it lasts just as long as the Auric, and I feel like it has a good wear time of five to six hours. Now, if you have dry patches, I do notice the Charlotte Tilbury doesn't necessarily catch on them, but it doesn't necessarily hydrate or kind of glide evenly over them. I also find that when it comes to pores, the Charlotte Tilbury has a kind of pattern where it does tend to catch on that texture and emphasize the pores on the face. Now that being said, you don't have to apply either of these products all over the face. The beauty of these products is that they're super customizable. You could choose to apply it only on the high points of your face or only on underneath the eyes. It really just depends on what your needs are. I actually really love applying a glow boosting product under the eyes because in my experience for my dark circles, it really helps reflect that darkness away. And I find I have to use less concealer, which I love because the effect is much more natural. But I will say that if you have dry patches, you will probably prefer using the Auric. Using the Auric alone, my face felt more hydrated and it glides over dry patches really, really beautifully. I also feel like it does not emphasize pore size as much as the Charlotte Tilbury does, and it doesn't feel as heavy on the skin. So if you are kind of more combination, you actually might prefer the Auric over the Charlotte Tilbury. All right, so I am back. I've done a full face of makeup except for my mascara, and you'll see why in just a moment. If you want to know about any of the products that I use today, just check the description box down below. Everything will be linked in my bio. But onto the makeup, I feel like both sides look extremely glowy. And what shocked me was that the Auric still looks extremely glowy under makeup, even though the Charlotte Tilbury looks glowier on its own. This is what I've found in terms of application. So on the Glow Lust side, I find that makeup looks so beautiful over the Glow Lust. It applies really smoothly, really evenly, and it never catches. I do find that sometimes, and on some days, depending on how my skin feels, the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, it does sometimes catch, especially on powder products. I find that they apply a little bit more pigmented, and I have to work a little bit harder to buff them out, which is not a deal breaker, but it's definitely something to notice. In terms of wear time, I have been playing with these products for about a month now, and I have found that the Glow Lust actually wears better underneath makeup than the Charlotte Tilbury. I don't know why, but the Charlotte Tilbury does fade throughout the day in terms of glow, and it can tend to break up the makeup a little sooner, whereas I feel like the Glow Lust does not play around with the wear time. It doesn't affect that longevity, and it also really provides a smooth base. It's kind of like a primer, tinted moisturizer, and glowy product all in one. So I actually feel like it looks so, so beautiful. Now I wanna zoom you guys in so that you can see the texture of everything over these two products. I have powdered my face on my chin, around my nasal labial folds and under my eyes and a little bit on my, just my T-zone because I don't wanna look shiny all over. All right, so now let's talk about how these products mixed in with other base products. So for the Auric Beauty, I found that it added a lot of glow, but also a good amount of hydration. And it was really especially nice when mixed with matte products because it kind of gave them new life. It created kind of a demi-matte, luminous finish and I found that it really didn't shear out the coverage too, too much. The Hollywood Flawless Filter mixed in really nicely with products, but I felt like it did not provide any extra hydration, and it sometimes sheared out the coverage a little bit. But they both look absolutely beautiful when mixed in with foundation. I will say that the Auric did not mess with the longevity, and I do feel like sometimes the Hollywood Filter does 
only by maybe 45 minutes, but it's still a noticeable difference. I think in general with the Hollywood Flawless Filter, you do need to powder a little bit more than on the side with the Auric. Now let's talk about applying these as highlights. Obviously with the Hollywood Flawless Filter, you do get more of a metallic look on the skin, which I think makes it a really perfect highlight. So just applying it onto the skin, I just like to take it and then I kind of dot it in and press it in with my fingers. And I love that it applies really, really well over powders as well. I usually take it on the high points of my face, but you'll notice that I almost don't even need to do that when I apply it underneath foundation because the glow is seriously insane. I don't really need more glow, but I wanted to show you how that applied. Same with the Auric. And I'm just gonna take that on to my finger. I will say you need less of the Auric than you do the Charlotte Tilbury in general for every kind of way of applying it. So whereas they're the same price point, I actually feel like a little goes such a long way with Auric and I do need to use more of the Charlotte Tilbury. So I think this is going to be a better value for your money in the long run, which is really, really nice. I also like the way that this product is dispensed. This product is dispensed with a pump, but the pump is really, really controlled. I can control the amount of product I get. I can use a smidgen of product if I want to, which is so nice because I find it so frustrating when pumps just disperse a single amount and then you end up wasting so much product. On the other hand, we have the Charlotte Tilbury here, which is with this kind of it's almost like a concealer wand and I hate it because I find that once you get towards the halfway point, you actually are wasting a lot of product. It's hard to get it out of the tube. You have to kind of turn it over and smack the bottom of it with your hand and it just wastes a lot of product. Not only that, but it's not the most sanitary way to dispense a face product. This is a massive bottle and the amount of times that you're just re-dipping this back in is super annoying. It also tends to leak on the sides as you keep using it. So poor packaging on the Charlotte Tilbury part, the Auric Beauty definitely wins. So before moving on to the eyes, I just want to say that my final thoughts on Auric versus Charlotte Tilbury is that I would recommend Auric Beauty to those who have drier skin, are more interested in longevity, and would be more interested in using it either on its own or underneath makeup. If you want a glowing highlighting product that you can either mix in with your foundation or use as a highlight, then you might prefer the Charlotte Tilbury. It kind of depends on your skin concerns, and hopefully this helped you come up with which product would be best suited to you. One more zoom in so we can see how the highlighted portion of these products looks on my skin. So this is the Charlotte Tilbury side. As you can see, everything is looking pretty smooth and the Auric side. In my opinion, it does not cling to pores as much or emphasize them, but that is the only difference that I've noticed. Okay, now on to the smoke reflect and the eyes to mesmerize. Obviously the first thing I thought of when I heard of Sam's launch was that it really did emulate high-end brands. I feel like the smoke reflex emulate Tom Ford very, very much because they have this creamy shade on the bottom. It's more of a cream. And then on the top, you have this topper which is more of a pressed glitter. I picked up mine in the shade temper which is this rose gold shade and i was really intrigued now with the charlotte tilbury they are more like the bottom half of the Auric Beauty Smoke Reflect where it's just a cream. The Charlotte Tilbury cream is more metallic than the Auric, so it's almost a combination of the cream and shimmer. In terms of application, the Charlotte Tilbury can be built up. It can be applied really lightly with a fluffy brush for every day or packed on the lid with fingers for a more metallic look. And I find that in general, when it's built up, it's actually almost as shimmery as the Auric with the topper on top. The Auric cream has has less of a shimmer and more of a sheen, but the topper is really, really glittery, which is why I was so surprised that there was very little fallout. Here I am with the Charlotte Tilbury, and on the other side, this is the Auric with both cream and topper. With mascara, again, the Charlotte Tilbury, and here is the Auric. All right, so I'm back with both sets of eyes done, and I have a few thoughts after having played with these products again 
for quite some time. So they're both super pretty, but if you want a bit more choice and you like the idea of a topper, then I would definitely go for Auric. The Smoke Reflex shade that I wanted was actually sold out. It was more of a goldeny brown, just like the Charlotte Tilbury one. This is in the shade Bet. But I really love the rose gold. I think it's so pretty on green eyes, and it actually kind of reminds me of more of a mauvey pinky color, which I actually really loved because I find that most rose golds are very salmon-y and kind of bordering on orange, which I really don't like. All right, everybody, I hope that this was helpful in giving you an idea of which brand and products you're going to gravitate towards most. For me, I am really impressed by Auric, and I genuinely think that if I had to choose between Auric and Charlotte Tilbury, my heart is leaning with Auric. I just find it to be much more wearable and a little bit more um, adjustable to your concerns, which I think is really, really cool. Both the Smoke Reflect and the Glow Lust can be worn according to your own preferences, and I think that is really awesome. And I love supporting other creators who are building brands with inclusivity and cruelty-free in mind. If you like videos like these, please give this video a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and comment down below letting me know if you've tried Auric Beauty, what do you think of Samantha's line, will you be trying or buying it, and let me know which videos you'd like to see from me next. Stick around because there's going to be so much more from me. Wishing you all an amazing week, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!